Hello, everyone. We are back online for the Talk for Health and Impact Fund in the third session today, uh, dedicated to river speech. Thank you, Ariane, and uh, it's great to be here. I'm Sabrina Tajdian. I'm a board member of French Tech Soul uh, and also an investment professional, and I have the pleasure to guide you today through this river speech session. So uh, what is this reverse speech session about, right? I, I think uh, we are all familiar with the concept of startups pitching to investors. And as a matter of fact, on Monday and Tuesday, we've seen some amazing startups uh, pitch their work to our panel of judges. Um, but today, uh, we are inverting the roles. Uh, we have selected three global impact funds. Uh, some of them are represented among the jury as well. Uh, and we're giving them a chance to showcase themselves. So this session is um, a way for those impact funds to shine, um, to share their investment thesis with us, and um, to show what they have to offer to startups that are setting out to make the world a better place. Um, so I have the pleasure to welcome three great speakers. We have Joanne Fowle from Atlas Capital, Elitsi Marek uh, from EduCapital, and Sonia Lee from Impact Connective. They will all take turns presenting their fund and their pitch, and then we will have some time for questions. Um, so please uh, write your questions in the Q&A uh, right, uh, on the right of your screen. Um, okay, so without further ado, uh, let me introduce our first speaker, Joanne Fowle, uh, at Atlas, uh, principal at Atlas Capital. So Joanne believes that tomorrow's heroes will be the founders of companies that demonstrate economic growth that benefits both society as a whole and our planet. At last, uh, society is a global movement, it's an accelerator, and it's a fund uh, gathering investors, influencers, corporate managers, artists, entrepreneurs, and other policymakers that seek to answer and embody the questions of what does a sustainable civilization look like and how do we get there by 2050 through investment and entrepreneurship. So Joan is also not only an investor but also an entrepreneur and a board advisor. So he's received awards from Tatler Gen T, Forbes 30 under 30. Uh, and he also co-founded GetLinks, which is Asia's leading tech talent network, which is funded by Alibaba. Joanne, the, front, the, the floor is yours. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for this introduction. Um, yeah, it's, it's really great to be here and to share about this, this new initiative um, we're putting together. Um, so, so as mentioned, for the past 10 years, I've been in tech um, across Europe, Silicon Valley in Asia. Uh, I've spent six years in Asia. Uh, I grew up in France um, and uh, um, I got the chance to really uh, be at the epicenter of technology and VC world, right? Um, got the chance to be funded by Alibaba, from VCs from Japan, from Australia, from Singapore. Got the chance to, to go to Silicon Valley and be accelerated by the best accelerator there, 500 startups, uh, right after graduating. So um, it's, it's been a story uh, that, has, that has been um, you know, right on time, I would say. And um, you know, I've, I've raised more than $50 million uh, for GetLinks, and uh, the, the company now is profitable, operating in eight markets uh, with around $20 million US dollar, uh, of uh, annual uh, runway and uh, double-digit growth. So I tell you, you know, it, it's, it seems good, but uh, I tell you what, uh, I'm very worried. Uh, I, I've been worried for a long time, but I'm very worried now. Uh, I'm worried that um, it's been so easy for me to raise that much money uh, for a very normal uh, tech company when I was just a graduate. Um, and uh, I'm not saying like GetLinks hasn't been something that is you know interesting. Uh, we're helping people to change their life, to get them tech jobs and maybe higher salary, but it's not really changing the world, right? And what I can see across the board is globally, um, I'm really worried seeing VCs investing billions of dollars into first world problem, uh, pet food startups, uh, radio, social networking startups. Um, and, uh, and it's been like that for the past 10 years. While it's now clear that we are in the middle of the sixth massive planetary specific extinction. Right? It's, a, it's a global event that the planet haven't seen for the past 100,000 years. And we're still not looking at, at the problem and facing the elephant in the room. 
Um, if in, in the perfect world, I believe every investor should take immediate and dramatic action supporting sustainability tech, right? Uh, every companies that are supporting a sustainability should be the companies we are talking about all the time. And hence, actually, Tesla was the best investment last year in the stock market. Uh, and Tesla is today the biggest sustainable tech company. Um, but but why not all VCs are chasing companies like Tesla, right? So 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 I'm actually confident about the future. Uh, I believe we're not going to let uh, humanity collapse uh, with the with the climate events. And um, I think investors who are putting their money to work today in sustainability uh, will make trillions of dollars. Uh, and that's why I'm really excited. Uh, and that's also uh, the conclusion of my book. The adaptive economy that I've published um, one and a half ago. And let me show you why I arrived to these conclusions. Um, so initially I was supposed to write a book about future of work uh, and through trying to understand what will be the most hiring industry next 10 years, I've realized that sustainability, uh, agri-tech and others, renewable energy uh, will be the key industries that are going to drive our decade. It's simple. If they are not the industry that are driving the growth next 10 years. Humanity as we know it might not be there anymore. A lot of people are talking and worried about overpopulation uh, and scientific around the world are actually mentioning that we might need more people because with the dramatic events that will occur next decade, humanity will be, really take a hit. Uh, COVID-19 uh, is just one of the 100,000 different diseases that climate change will be accelerating spreading. Uh, and people who are very intelligible, like Bill Gates, have been writing books about that for the past 10 years, but no one really listened. On the other side, technology disruption through AI, robotics, and ARP, AOP uh, will accelerate the wealth gap and hence create a lot of social inequalities. And hence, it's a time bomb. It's a, it's a social time bomb, right? Some, 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 through these inequalities, a lot of people will revolt and some countries, as a result, might actually be destabilized and disappear. So I think um, it's, it's really clear now that sustainability is coming to a point where it's becoming not only a very exciting industry to invest, because the companies driving sustainability next 10 years will really be trillion dollar companies, but it's also something that we have to do. And when any founders is joining sustainability tech company or starting them, uh, they will feel like their impact uh, is maximized, right? So I'm really excited to be part of this industry. And for me, uh, I got the chance to get a lot of money uh, from my first company, Get Links, as exits. Uh, and I'm still involved. I'm still running the company as a group strategy officer, but I had the chance to hire a CEO to run the company and to do the day to day. And so that's where I'm putting together this uh, new fund. It's going to take us a while to, to raise it completely, uh, but we are already putting together a community and an accelerator. Uh, so I'm really excited about sharing more about that today. Um, so, so, so Atlas, uh, we're putting together Asia first um, sustainability tech focused seed stage VC uh, in Asia, right? So uh, it's going to be a $10 million fund. So I'm putting money in alongside uh, my, my wealthiest friends. Uh, we, are, we, are, we have a uh, 6 million US dollar already committed from three family offices uh, plus me. And we're aiming to kick off the fund uh, in 2022. Uh, in the meantime, we kicked off uh, Atlas Society. And Atlas Society is nothing else than this page. We're just aiming to gather up uh, 1,000 founders and sustainability tech actors around the world, right? So any investors that have portfolio companies in sustainability tech is welcome to join any founders uh, of sustainability tech uh, companies in Europe, US or Asia is welcome to join. And what we do is we create a support, uh, a support net for these people, right? So it's not only about raising money, it's also about having corporate clients, corporate uh, partners. It's also about having the right scientists because we're talking about questions like hydroponics or uh, agriculture tech that requires scientists that maybe are very expensive at the beginning. So startups, these are the experts to join them. And we, we are actually helping those companies and founders to be out there, right? So we are interviewing those people, 
um, showcasing what they are doing, and that's the process of helping fundraise from ours, from us, and uh, our investors, or from other investors that we have partnered with. Um, we got the chance to launch uh, very, very uh, recently, but we already got uh, Robert Donny Jr.'s Footprint Coalition uh, as one of the, the partner investors, as well as Pangean Ventures, Ira VC, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio's Fund, and Bill Gates' Fund uh, are part of the, 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 the alliance we're putting together. So companies who are joining Atlas Society today uh, have an accelerated access to those VCs uh, that are already legitimate as well. Um, pretty much, this is this is this is what we've we've launched. And now today, very specifically for today, I wanted to share this news uh, at this event. Um, and this is something we're unleashing right now. We're actually putting together a 12 weeks uh, accelerator uh, for 10 companies, and I hope to pick one or two companies from today's events. Um, and uh, this accelerator is going to be 100% remote and accepting companies uh, from pre-seed to seed. Uh, so application are up, up to May 31st. We already have three companies in the batch. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll be looking forward to have more companies joining, hopefully from Korea or from this event uh, to join us. You can go to theatlascapital.com slash accelerator if you want to learn more. That's it for me for now. Thank you so much, Joanne. That is super impressive, both your background and what you're you know, setting out to achieve here. Um, uh, very uh, interesting to see you're not just deploying capital, but uh, putting together a whole you know, support network and ecosystem with acceleration and, and experts. Um, so uh, looking forward to, to uh, you know, seeing this movement, as you say, uh, grow. Um, next up uh, is uh, Litsi Marek. She's the manag uh, managing partner at EduCapital. Uh, Litsi has uh, 15 years of experience in private equity. Uh, she started in she started in leverage finance at CACIB before joining Strategic Investment Fund and the uh, Public Investment Bank, uh, where she took part in the creation of the large venture fund uh, dedicated to late stage venture capital investment. Uh, and then she went on to co-found um, Edu Capital, which is the first European fund that is dedicated to the future of learning and work. And um, 3.5 years into it, EduCapital has now 17 uh, portfolio companies and relies on a strong international brand and network. So Litsi is passionate about entrepreneurship and innovation with a deep interest in new technologies and transform transformative models impacting the way we all learn. Um, Litsi currently sits on the boards of Looney, Lalio, 360 Learning, Open Digital Education, Makers Academy, and Absco. Uh, Litsi has two sons. She holds a degree in engineering and finance from Ecole Centrale Paris. Litsi, uh, let's hear more about ID Capital. Hi. Hi, everybody. Thank you very much for the introduction. Yeah, I'm Litsi, and I've been spending the past 15 years in private equity uh, after my school. And the uh, last experience before launching Edu Capital was at Public Investment Bank, which is a investment arm of the French government. In 2016, I met my partner, Marie-Christine Levé. So I've been working with, with her in the past, and Marie-Christine has a strong experience in the digital space as an entrepreneur, a CEO, and an investor. And together, we decided to launch uh, EduCapital. So we created it in 2016 and closed our fund, our first, first fund in 2017. Uh, and EduCapital is the first European fund dedicated to a future of education and work. So basically, we invest in innovative companies reinventing the way we learn and work. Uh, why, uh, why we did that? Uh, you know, in 2016, 17, the uh, world was not exactly as it is today. Uh, we did that because, um, so together, we were absolutely convinced by, um, by the opportunity, uh, by, by the market opportunity and the necessity to, uh, to build that fund and to prepare uh, the, gener the current and next generation to the, to the, to the challenges uh, and to prepare them to, uh, to, the, future of, uh, to the future of work. Uh, education is facing huge challenges as a challenge to educate the planet and to, uh, uh, to, uh, to provide a good education at scale, as a challenge to, uh, to build an inclusive education and to reduce the dropout, and to adapt to the new generation and to prepare them to the, to the future of, to the, to the jobs of the future and reducing the skill gap. We were convinced, uh, so education is a, 
big, growing, sustainable, and under-digitized markets. Uh, digital and technology is only 3% of the education market, whereas it can be like 40% for the, for the media industry. So market opportunity, opportunity is enormous and uh, technology and innovation is the answer to help solve and that, uh, that challenge. Uh, the, the innovation and technology allows to scale pedagogy. You, we, it started with a big company such as uh, Coursera who put online the, the best, the most efficient pedagogy and to, to provide them um, all around the world. Technology allows to personalize to personalize education and to provide to anybody uh, like personalized uh, learning pathway in order to, to build a more inclusive education. Technology allows to build uh, immersive and efficient collaborative learning and uh, to, to allow, any, to, to allow to any, anybody uh, to, to learn through his life. So uh, I'm absolutely convinced that in the future and today and in the future, we won't be able to to rely only on our like initial training and, and diploma, we need to adapt uh, to learn uh, during our life and to be able uh, to be able to uh, to find jobs, to be more prepared to the future of work. So we raised forty. We we have uh, today sixty million dollar under management. Uh, we raised money with prestigious LPs, including public investment bank, corporate LPs active in the education space family offices and private investor. We are a pure early stage fund. Uh, and what we do is uh, we, we are a minority investor taking stakes in European, mainly European, but also Israeli and US based company uh, in the edtech space. So we cover all the segments of the education space. So it can be early childhood, K-12, so school, primary, secondary, higher education school, lifelong learning and corporate learning. Uh, we, uh, we have a proprietary uh, sourcing and deal flow based on the expertise that we've built in the past three years. Uh, we invest in growing, innovative and impact driven company uh, with tickets uh, comprised between uh, one and four million euro. So mainly post seed and series A deal. And uh, we, uh, we are looking for a company uh, able to, uh, to scale internationally. Uh, and basically, uh, what who we address uh, with our fund, you know, it, uh, ed tech market is quite large. We can address parents uh, looking for more innovative and affordable solution uh, to uh, to educate their children, complementary to school. Uh, we are addressing schools and teacher uh, with uh, innovative tools and uh, digital resources uh, to uh, allow them to gain time, uh, to allow them to provide a more efficient and engaging education. We are addressing universities uh, that, that which need to, to scale and to digitize their, their, uh, their learning pathway. Uh, we are also observing a new wave of private universities. We are addressing companies with uh, innovative tools to, to allow them to better train, uh, recruit, engage their employee. And finally, we are addressing any learner or worker thanks to lifelong learning platform, allowing them to improve their skills and employability. So we raised the fund uh, uh, in September 2017, and many things happened uh, during the past uh, three years and a half. So first, uh, we really built uh, EduCapital. So today we have a, a global brand recognized internationally. Uh, as we has been the first European fund, you know, it was a, it's a huge market, but a small ecosystem. So uh, we have been like easily uh, recognized as a you know, like unique European player that has allowed us to, uh, to build a strong connection with the international VC, uh, US EdTech VC fund, incubator, accelerator, and all the people around the education and EdTech. Uh, we have demonstrated our ability to, to create impact. So this is very, this is in our DNA, basically. So uh, we, we really think that, you know, uh, performance is uh, strongly correlated to a social impact, uh, especially in the tech space. If you want to build a big, scalable and sustainable company, it has to, to rely on a you know uh, impact uh, KPIs KPIs you know it, it has to 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 provide an accessible 
scalable education and also efficient. So that's why learning outcome is very important for us. You, we really measure how technology and innovation helps to build a more efficient education, allowing people to, to, uh, to, to find job, uh, to be prepared for the future of work and allowing children to, uh, to learn in a better way. We are very uh, committed uh, to, uh, to accompany uh, and to support the companies in our portfolio. Uh, we have built a strong expertise, so we screen what happens in, in edtech space on a daily basis and on a worldwide with a worldwide scope. Uh, so it re it's really helpful for the entrepreneurs we support. Uh, so the, what we can bring to them, we can help them in the way we in the way they recruit, they, they develop their company and recruit people because we've built a database of. Uh, uh, you know, people interested by uh, uh, in that ed tech space. Uh, we are providing them market watch, uh, helping them to define their strategy, to think about the ne next step, diversification and build up. And uh, and finally, we are like connecting them with uh, all the finance, the funders, you know, as a VC fund and uh, and potential acquire acquirers to help them to prepare the next round and exit. And so we have been the first choice partner of very successful companies uh, and entrepreneurs. We are here are quotes of uh, some of our entrepreneurs. So uh, very happy in the way we, we help them. And uh, we've been able to, uh, to, uh, to attract a prestigious co-investor, um, whether it is for the, the first uh, as co-investor or people uh, refinancing companies in our portfolio. Today, we have 16 uh, companies in our portfolio, a very diversified portfolio from pre-K-12 to K-12, higher education, future of work, and lifelong learning with various business models, including B2B, SaaS, B2C, marketplace, consumer tech, new kind of schools. So uh, yeah, the, the, the sector we, has, we address can be very large and diversified. And of course, you know, what happened also uh, for us, you know, uh, we, we are leaving the, the COVID as a strong catalyst for our, our market. Uh, we think that, you know, with that crisis, we gained the five to 10 years in the way uh, ed tech, technology and digital is used and adopted in the education and, and workplace. Uh, so, uh, you know, it, COVID has implied a huge global and uh, strong experimentation of uh, ed tech tools. And we are, we think that, you know, we, we won't come back uh, this is a new wave uh, for our market. And if you look at what happened in the VC space, uh, it is uh, reflecting the strong marketplace, the, the strong market trend, sorry. So uh, ed tech investment are, have, has increased a lot, and especially in 2020, um, ed tech market has been estimated from $300 billion to $500 billion. So gaining, like as I, as I, as I said, five to 10 years in the development uh, of that market. Uh, unicorns have been multiplied. So today we have more than 20 tech unicorns worldwide and uh, and very promising uh, European company. And we are we are proud to have uh, like three of the next next European uh, unicorn in our portfolio. Uh, so today we are uh, finalizing uh, the deployment of Fund One. So still room to uh, to welcome new entrepreneurs in our portfolio. And we are raising a 100 million euro, so one, 120 million dollar fund two. Uh, it will be the successor of fund one. Same strategy, same aim to uh, to build the ed tech industry in Europe. Thank you. Wow, that's amazing. Out of what, 17 portfolio companies already, three uh, unicorns in the making. I'm so impressed. Um, I think never has uh, ed tech been so relevant uh, in the age of COVID where kids are out of school and have to learn remotely. So you really are at the right place at the right time. Um, next up is uh, Sonia Lee. Uh, she's partner at Impact Collective. Uh, Impact Collective is a virtual community-driven investment and accelerator program uh, for startups in Asia Pacific. Uh, Sony has been involved uh, in the impact and technology scene, uh, you know, for the last uh, decade as a founder and as an investor. Uh, she co-founded one of the first blockchain impact startups in Silicon Valley in 2014. Um, and she was uh, later as chief of strategy at Metadium, 
uh, a digital identity company. Uh, Songi has worked in Asia, in Europe, in the US, and she's traveled to 40 plus countries. Uh, she's passionate about weaving global communities, supporting entrepreneurs uh, and well-being. So Songi, if you are ready, you're up next. 안녕하세요. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to the session today. Uh, where I am is a little bit late. Uh, it says Seoul, Korea, but actually I'm in New Zealand at the moment. And it's like 9.30, uh, almost 10. Uh, but still, lovely to meet you. And uh, excuse and apology for my late background. Uh, yeah, myself, uh, I think Sabrina gave me uh, or give us a very good introduction of myself. I've been involved in technology, especially deep technology like blockchain and impact for last uh, like five, five plus years and the impact in total like most actually more than 10 years. And my passion has been always connecting the technology to the uh, more of impact side and uh, me being in the middle of impact and technology uh, 10 years ago there were no overlap so it was always like kind of like one or the other and i'm gladly uh, seeing that new waves of this overlapping and uh, that creates the impact uh, i'm so happy to see that it's happening and then also can be part of that journey as well so i will give you guys a quick introduction about what impact collective does uh, that is actually started in korea uh, but based in asia pacific and we have a team member that are based in thailand singapore australia vietnam uh, basically uh, new zealand and basically covering all the asia pacific so I will share my screen quickly uh, and then introduce uh, who we are. Yeah, basically, I'm inviting all you, all of you, to co-create the future with the Impact Collective. Uh, Impact Collective is uh, just uh, it isn't just acceleration program or investment program. It's a truly community driven. Uh, what it means is like. You know, often when you go to the investor, uh, most of the time, the limited number of investors, they deciding who to invest, uh, but the world is getting more diverse. And also there's a lot more uh, things happening that, that like just few investors can cover. So what we believe is in actually collective intelligence. And how can we actually using collective intelligence and community uh, to actually prove a startup's concept and as a supporter and as a, as a consumer to really choose what company should get invest and then bring in more impact to the world. So this is a design to be community driven and that we are focusing on the opportunities in Asia Pacific region. And so we just not investing, but we invest and support and connect the oldest startups and then other stakeholder to really help the team to solve the uh, challenges that is creating positive impact. And also uh, our mission is very, very clear. Uh, it's not just about uh, talking about impact alone, or in business alone, we really help the great business to uh, actually uh, discover in and internalize their impact strategy, and uh, they can take a like a leapfrogging from where they are right now. So, if any of you guys are uh, looking for your impact strategy and an impact storytelling or impact measurement uh, that can be weaven into uh, your business, uh, this is us and you can just find us uh, online and then apply for our new program, that which I'm gonna talk about a little bit more. So Impact Collective carries a three key pillar. So we are focusing on uh, Asia reason. So whether you are, uh, I mean, last year, 2020, we actually got the application from all around the world, including Europe and US and Canada and South America, uh, whoever that has an angle or the market to uh, Asia Pacific. But this year we particularly focus on the uh, startup that are based in South Asia uh, to really operate in an uh, uh, efficient time zone. Uh, and then, uh, you know, we really believe the Asia Pacific reason is the actually the, uh, the new market and then also the new solution, not just the country that there is creating a problem, but creating a solution. So that's how why we are focusing on that reason. Uh, and then we also truly community driven. So uh, I'm going to show you a little bit later, but we have a community platform that is built uh, from the scratch for this project. 
Uh, we have now 1,000 uh, plus members uh, helping startups and uh, their judges and experts and uh, students or academias and researchers, a lot of different people comes together uh, and incentivize to support the startup by using token system. Uh, and they can actually uh, 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 invest their time and energy instead of money to really uh, see and then see the fruit of the succession of the companies. Uh, so community is the heart of our program. Uh, and an impact, of course. And uh, we working with the UNDP and UNSCOV and UFNA and a more other uh, bigger international organization to um, uh, deliver the uh, sustainable development goal uh, by 2030. And then uh, we help entrepreneurs really uh, discover and communicate their impact strategy well. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, startup and investors are not just two uh, actors in the ecosystem. Actually, there are more people that could contribute to the uh, ecosystem and contributing. So international uh, or educational institute and the public sector, uh, policymakers and uh, other foundations and a lot of different people. And at heart, the consumer and the customer, they have to actually uh, have the power to uh, uh, to growth of the company, and then if they can decide who gets the investment, and then bring more positive energy and and then positive income and then positive impact to the world, that's actually the really really golden, and then that's a part of our uh, big pro uh, heart of our program. Uh, so far, we have a thousand plus uh, members on our platform, and last year we have like ninety plus, uh, a nine sorry, nine, ninety five plus uh, official expert, and uh, with one hundred seventeen community judge, and uh, we had uh, like six hundred team applied, and out of that, eighty four team from thirty five countries were uh, incubated and accelerated with us, and average monthly revenue of this startup was seventy five k, and we are um, uh, we we we. Bring raised the $5 million uh, for the, our first fund, and then we are uh, looking to raise uh, uh, more uh, $2 million for the second fund in Singapore. So this is a brief uh, introduction in number, and we are focusing on six different themes. So if you are eligible for any of uh, SDG, uh, you have a place to uh, put on. So inclusive health and the quality of life, and green energy and environment, circular economy, and desolation for uh, uh, equal opportunity and sustainable food and agriculture and the future of work and economic growth are uh, basically covering all the SDGs. Uh, so if you know what you're doing uh, with your impact, uh, uh, you can just find your foot. Uh, yeah, this is six reasons why you should apply for Impact Collective or join our community. Basically, the investment uh, comes uh, one as uh, most important thing, and uh, the pilot project opportunity because we're working with the UN and a lot of this uh, city network, and so we have a uh, also working with the WeGo, which is a uh, uh, hundred plus city mayors and network, and so we can easily uh, plug into your projects to uh, these platforms and then these cities. And second, we have a fast track investment, so you don't have to wait till the end of the program to get the investment. You, we can already start the investment process with you. And there's no fee or uh, equity required to join the program. And it's community driven again, an inclusive community judge. So you are not uh, just bound to the one or the other, like either race or topic. So there's a really, really inclusive, uh, inclusive um, uh, communities is judging you and supporting you. And number six, again, diversity. Uh, and we have amazing uh, mentors from all of different countries and the different sectors. I will share a little bit more about them. And they are there to support you and uh, be the part of the uh, community. Uh, so yeah, these are our partners, uh, 150 plus individuals from all these different countries, uh, including North America to Australia, India, Australia, Malaysia, Cambodia. So you name it, you find it. And our partners are uh, uh, mostly uh, social expert, social impact expert, or business strategy people, or technology, or team and management, or finance, or PR. And their profession is uh, either like invest, uh, industry expert or VC, twenty four percent, and ecosystem builder, twenty percent, and the UN and policymakers, five percent. Yeah. So we are starting another cohort 
of Impact Collective that is 10 weeks of uh, transformation. Uh, uh, our application opened on July 1st, and uh, we're going to announce the team on the August 30, uh, and probably is uh, September 1st, actually. And then uh, nine weeks of uh, amazing journey together, including camp, impact session, home group check-in, ecosystem mapping, policy dialogue, and a lot of different regional and theme events. Uh, and then final week, we do a final booting and then announce the winner or teams that are doing an amazing job. Uh, yeah, so uh, we believe in the future of Collective. And uh, yeah, this is our platform that I want to share uh, briefly. Uh, you, If you can go to impactcollective.moim.co, this is our online platform. These are the team actually got voted from the community. So you can see that all the voting numbers and team's profile is all open, very transparent. Uh, we have now 1,068 members. Uh, there is all the information that you can learn about. And then uh, we're going to soon uh, design this to uh, 2021. Uh, this is 2020 at the moment. Uh, yeah, so this is uh, basically a short and long introduction of Impact Collective. Uh, yeah, I think this is me and we'd we'll love to meet you guys on the Q&A as well. Thank you. Wow, thank you so much, Songyi. That was very impressive. Uh, the critical mass that you've achieved in, in you know, just about a year, thousand uh, member strong community, uh, almost 85 startups accelerated. Uh, I, I like that your team is fully decentralized and uh, also that you are using token incentives. I definitely can relate to that blockchain angle. So that's that's super innovative right here. Um, so now we're going to go ahead. We have about just about 20 minutes um, to discuss and have some open Q&As. Um, so uh, to the audience, you know, feel free to write your Q&As and then we'll go in order. Um, and uh, the first one, I think the first one was written uh, while Joanne was speaking. So I think that's that one is for um, uh, it's for him. Uh, may I know what? And so from uh, Michael, yeah, uh, Michael Yin uh, from Trinity Echo, he's interested in um, which investment verticals and in sustainability are you looking at? Um, and uh, because it's a very broad, uh, you know, area, and what stage are you investing in? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so there is uh, there is ten very specific verticals I have um, mentioned in, in my book, and that's basically our investment thesis. Uh, it's all on the website, uh, so there is a lot of details, a lot of research that uh, we've been doing to to decide on that investment thesis. Um, but basically. Uh, I give you I give you an example of companies we are already invested in, um, uh, and they are mainly in agritech. So how to reinvent uh, food production um, and uh, and food uh, consumption and recycling. Number two is uh, the ocean. So ocean plastic pollution, uh, ocean preservation, biosphere uh, preservation, uh, and number three is renewable energies. So uh, solar, um, lithium, um, how to alleviate new solar with uh, uh, low rare earth mining, for example. Um, also, um, we have one company which is very interesting. It's, it's like a live mentor uh, based in, uh, in Asia. Uh, so uh, maybe Lizzy will be interested. Um, so this is a G lifelong digital employability company. We have a recycling company. Uh, which I invested personally as, as an angel investor, and I know we're going to roll that up into, into the fund as well. Uh, IoT recycling company. Um, we have, uh, yeah, so it's, it's very much around whatever key pillar is needed to build a sustainable civilization, right? So again, how do we continue the capitalism without uh, killing our planet, um, but also how do we produce and consume on a way that is enabled with technology, but on a sustainable way, right? So again, if you want more details, I invite you to go to the website atlascapital.com and check the book. Um, all of the investment thesis is listed there. Thank you. Um, that, I think that very much answers the, the, the question. Um, so I think earlier, maybe Sonia touched upon the, the fact that um, there are, are Traditionally, uh, you know, impact investment and and um, uh, and technology were were quite separate. 
um, it was, uh, you know, invest impact investing was mostly led by philanthropists and, and, and government and organizations and, and nonprofits, while uh, VC style impact funds uh, are more of a, a recent development. Um, so the your organizations today are more of an example of, of this trend. Uh, what do you guys uh, think created those conditions for that kind of shift to happen? In other words, you know, why was impact investing seen as not financially viable for investors back then, for tech investors in particular? Um, and, and why has it become, you know, more attractive now? I don't really know, but what I can say is that uh, this is the sense of the history. Uh, you know, uh, uh, I think that everybody now is conscious about the absolute necessity to invest in uh, impact uh, causes and, uh, and company, whether they are listed company or private equity or venture capital. And personally, I think the, the, the way we should think as impact, uh, uh, think of impact is not like a constraint. Uh, we need to reconciliate uh, performance and impact and find a way to make it work. I think this is, we really need to understand that considering the challenge of, uh, of the world where, where we live, you know, it is strongly correlated. So if you, if, you, if you develop a company which is not generating impact, I think that it won't be sustainable and performing in the future. So uh, I'm convinced that, you know, if you want to, uh, you know, these two um, indicators, uh, financial performance and impact are, co are correlating and, and correlated. And this is the way we should think, you know, either whether we are an impact fund, like a regulated impact fund or not. So for us at EduCapital, you know, we, uh, you know, it, it has never been like a constraint or a difficulty to, to find impact driven company, maybe because we are operating in the education also, but, uh, and, uh, and we have um, rejected a lot of company uh, that, were, that were not generating impact. And the reason why we said no, it was not because of impact, it was because we think it was a, a bad investment. So for example, a, a company, a ed tech company, a lifelong learning platforms only driven by marketing, so uh, attracting people and promising uh, uh, good learning experience or a better employability. But at the end of the day, if they don't deliver indeed a good employability, uh, that means that first they are not making generating impact, but I think that they won't be sustainable in the future. So it's a bad investment and I don't want to be part of it. No, that's a, that, that's a great point, right? It is possible to to have a good investment that has that has impact, and usually that that, that goes hand in hand. Uh, anyone else wants to add on to to that point? Yeah, I mean, let's see. Uh, I really totally agree with the leeches. There is a definitely correlations, and when we talk about investment, at the core of it, actually, you know, we want to invest in the company that is uh, 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 solving the problem. And then create creating the solution, and then now the problem of our society and humanity, and uh, the environmental and social and governmental, uh, the the problem has been too big. So we can't avoid it anymore. We cannot just go away and close our door and then like pretend that nothing has happened because we are suffering every day with the consequences. So uh, you know, like all the company uh, at, at the at the core of the, those founders, they always believe in okay, I'm here to create a solution to the big problem that everybody's sharing so it's, it's automatically correlated like because the problem is so big and then we uh, see the more companies coming out of that mission and then uh, we, we see because the problem is so big the market is so big as well so that's why we are investing in uh, in this company and then it's not particularly are we going to invest in only company that is making impact but the, there is enough a company that is coming out of the market at the moment that is creating impact which equal equally consider as a, a creating a big solution you know uh, so uh, that's why we personally interested in uh, impact company and then we've been in, in investing in a lot of company for last um since 2012 13 uh, like 100 plus company and some of them we invest without knowing that they're an impact company but now there is not much distinction anymore and that we really on board with this idea of uh, the older business has to kind of creating some sort of impact and then it's really a matter of how they actually link 
with the impact that they're creating. And then we want to help the companies to discover those impact angle and then make that strong and then bringing those impact strategy into their mission statement as well. So they cannot actually just creating a business or just creating impact, but the more business they uh, do well, that the more impact automatically creates it. And that's how uh, our model plays. Right, it seems like the line is really getting blurred, right? There used to be just kind of impact companies that are not necessarily profit driven, but now you can you can see uh, profit driven companies that also have uh, impact imperatives, right? So it seems like the, the, the mindsets are really changing across the board. Um, we have a question from uh, Young Jun C of Wellesis. Uh, he's asking, what are the top impact on global investment due to COVID-19? Uh, he found that attracting global investment during the pandemic was very hard um, and he had to turn to local VCs. I don't know about you guys because impact actually I'm, it, it might have actually been accelerated during COVID-19. I'm not sure what was what was your uh, impression uh, during the during the crisis? Uh, yeah, I can add like briefly because we found a really interesting um because I we have a lot of company that is actually benefited by COVID. For example, the one of the company that we invested in uh, Bangladesh, uh, in uh, the, the company called Shuttle, uh, they were just uh, providing this uh, ban, like a you know a little bit bigger uh, mobility services uh, for people instead of using public uh, transportation, which is uh, dangerous and more expensive. Uh, they're providing the middle size of the uh, 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 mobility uh, solution to. The, company and then because of COVID that a lot of people are can't use a public transportation so they start to having a lot of B2B uh, a customer that are offering these vans to their employees so their market went up like crazy so it was really good and another company that we invest in Pakistan uh, they're amazing company called Seha Ka'ani uh, the two women doctors are leading these amazing companies and because of COVID uh, people cannot uh, come to the health center or, or a hospital so their application which is a telemedicine uh, uh, application uh, got really really popular so people not just in Pakistan but Pakistanis that are in abroad started using this product as well so their market also uh, went up uh, quite a bit and uh, although because of COVID we thought that we might not able to find a lot of company to invest abroad but because of that uh, we turn our program to 100% virtual so we could uh, able to we could I mean we, we we were able to actually find a lot of company that are doing amazing job uh, and we can facilitate this process uh, virtually 100% so uh, I found it very interesting but still operating 100% virtual is really really hard and uh, we often um, uh, just saying like oh what what if we actually met together what if we really actually share the energy and space together that might have been a lot better but mm -hmm. still surprisingly good great uh, maybe joan you can add a couple things right because you are really raising a fund in in the, in the middle of this this pandemic so uh, what has been your experience been so far has it, has, has it been do you think easier or more difficult yeah i mean Firstly, I can share my experience as an entrepreneur who've made it to Series B. Um, and, and I think a lot of investors don't have that experience, right? A lot of ex investors come from your know, financial background and they have absolutely no idea on how to build a business. So I think uh, it's not the case for all of them, of course, right? But uh, um, I think, I think what's, what's the key is uh, the VC model, I believe, um, is, is broken. Uh, for a very long time, and um, and and the fact that a young guy like me at 22 years old could raise 10 million US dollar with just an idea, uh, that was really weird uh, or fucked up, right? So that was uh, five years ago, and not that it's not good to give that much money to a young kid like me at that time, but but yeah, it was a bit weird. Now the even weirder thing is um, it's I believe for companies who are triple bottom line or Zebra, and that are trying to seek not only uh, profit or unicorn status, but are also trying to really solve a problem that um, no one have been looking at it, uh, before, most of the investors will, will automatically turn down um, these, these projects, right? So I think in that sense, the, the capital available, and there's a lot of money out there, is really just not going to this triple bottom line company at first. 
right? Uh, and hence, it's it's really really hard for uh, entrepreneurs in the sustainability tech area to raise money, right? Because uh, investors of today are only realizing, oh, it's time to invest in e-commerce <laughs> for most of the most of them, right? Uh, I'm talking about the LPs, right? So so there is there is number one, you need to educate what is sustainability and why your project, if you're if you're doing recycling, for example, still have a chance to be a multi-million dollar company. Uh, number two, you have to explain that you are you're a good founder and your team is great, etc., which a lot of people won't believe you. And uh, and number three, uh, COVID comes in, so you just have no chance to raise money, right? Uh, I think I've seen I've seen uh, dozens of companies dying uh, around, around around me uh, last year, and the climate makes it very very difficult. And hence, this is where I think the the VC model of applying to get the chance to talk to a VC uh, over a thirty minutes uh, meeting it, it doesn't really work, right? Uh, most of VC reject ninety percent or ninety nine percent of the application they get, um, and and a lot of them actually. They are not bad, right? They they also want to help the community, just they don't have the time, right? They can only help the very one percent because they are being judged on the performance of their fund after five years or ten years, right? So so that's where I think the VC model is broken, and we need to reinvent it. And I really like organizations like Impact Collective because they are putting together this infrastructure around the fund, right? And again, I think at the early stage, like seed stage, you really need that. Right, you, because anyway, you're going to spend the money on hiring people on, or, or hiring expertise to build your company or going to market. So I think building the, the safety net and the structure, uh, the infrastructure for companies to develop global network, to reach uh, new markets uh, through access to experts is really what is needed, specifically for sustainability. And I think that's a great addition. So I, I, can, I can foresee that. Um, the impact, to answer the question of Yang Jun, uh, the impact is the, the investment of seed uh, across the board have been reduced dramatically. Um, but I think there is emergence of support systems and accelerators that are trying to bridge that and take the hand of these companies toward raising money. And I think this is great. Thank you. That, that's super insightful, and uh, yeah, definitely. It seems like there is a gap to fill. So it's good to see uh, your your organization uh, and and also Impact Collective kind of developing new models or, or, or around those needs. Uh, let's see. Do you want to jump in also? And 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 uh, I know you've touched upon the impact of COVID so far. It seems like it was more yeah. of an accelerator for you. So could you? Yeah. Tell us so um, that? yeah. So for us, you know, everything around digital learning. Uh, for for children, uh, lifelong learning for adults, everything for us, uh, you know, around um, helping companies to re to operate their digital transformation and helping people to uh, to work remotely, you know, was very very attractive and uh, uh, during that crisis and um, and we saw that uh, in our portfolio in our portfolio, so many companies in our portfolio raised money again. Uh, even you know uh, before the lockdown period, we sold also one company. I can tell you a few example of uh, you know super, super overperforming company in our portfolio. So for, for example, Lapster. So Lapster is a Danish company based in Copenhagen uh, and Boston. They are digitizing and so reinventing basically the way we learn science uh, thanks to digital and um, virtual reality. So it's like a digital campus uh, allowing universities to move online and to uh, to to teach um, all the science subject, ecology, chemistry, physics, uh, um, healthcare, you know, in a digital space. Uh, and so their business model is to um, to sell this uh, like a SaaS product to university. Uh, so it was m growing very well. And uh, with crisis has been a strong accelerator, so they multiplied by by seven. They they, they raised money with uh, Andre um uh, in the lockdown period, and uh, we saw all these U.S.-based universities mainly, you know, launching new programs on online and discovering the power of technology to really like uh, improve uh, the outcome of um, to really like yeah improve the learning outcome. Uh, other example of companies, so it's Preply. Preply is a Kiev-based company 
uh, developing a global marketplace to learn languages. So it is connected learners with, with teachers all around the world in 150 countries. And uh, this is really the, the you know, what uh, global, net, global network effect can bring uh, to the society and to the company, allowing, you know, to, to connect people, uh, whatever, you know, uh, all, whatever your country and, and the time zone and to and to learn new stuff thanks to digital. And uh, yeah, it's also a company that has experienced uh, a strong growth because uh, uh, because uh, yeah, the learning really moved to a uh, uh, on digital and uh, and people and learners and workers at time to um, to discover that kind of platforms and, and what we are observing today. So yeah, unfortunately, p pandemic is not over, but still we are observing that uh, this is not like a, a wave, a, a, like a, like. A, a trend uh, which will disappear disappear is this is a new paradigm uh, for our market and our company so uh, yeah so uh, edtech is a good market uh, <laughs> to invest in uh, linked to, uh, to to our new world and uh, linked to the crisis great thank you thank you for sharing your experience thank you all for telling us about your organizations today i'd love to continue this discussion it's going to have to be offline because we're just about out of time now, uh, but um, this was uh, really very interesting. I learned a lot of stuff, and um, uh, I think we had a really good, uh, diverse uh, uh, panel of, of, of um, investors here today. So thank you again for your time and for for joining us.